Hey everyone, it's Tesla Tom here. Thank you so much for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. And in this video, I'm going to walk through with you uh, the latest version of the Tesla app, which is 4.2, 4.0 for Apple iOS, which is the operating system I'm running it on. And to start with, you must manually update the Tesla app. And by that, I mean, you must actually go into the App Store for Apple at least, and actually click on the Tesla app there and actually press update. As you can see, I've already done it. So it says open, but if you haven't done it yet, it'll say update. Uh, Tesla's one of those apps that, that doesn't auto update. You've got to actually manually update it for yourself. And then when you update it, you should get version 4.2, 4.0. This update or this video is for Apple iOS. Okay, so once you have updated your Tesla app, um, you can actually now, if you have a Tesla Powerwall 2, which is what I've got here on my left, uh, and if you also have a Gen 3 Tesla wall connector, as I've got in front of me here, then you can actually add the uh, wall connector to your Tesla ecosystem. So I'll just show you what it looks like once you've done that all successfully. And if you just call up your Powerwall 2 part of the app, you should see now an extension to the house, so to speak. And there's now a little Gen 3 wall charger sitting there. And once you plug your car in, you'll see the name of your car, as I'll show you in a second, and the car charging away. And because of that function, you can now actually uh, set your schedule charging times for your vehicle uh, from the Tesla app if you set up your Gen 3 wall connector as well. Okay, so in order to add a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector to the Tesla app ecosystem, uh, what you want to do is go to the profile icon in the top right corner of your app. And down here, it'll say add remove product. So let's click that. Okay, so we will add a wall connector. And that's the screen that confronts you there. Welcome to Wall Connector. Set up your Wall Connector to see charging data and to get the latest software updates. Only Generation 3 or newer devices are compatible with the app. Identify your model. So Generation 3 looks like that. So introduced in March 2020 in North America, September 2021 in the rest of the world, which is I think when I got mine. The front is made of glass and has a smaller logo like the one in front of me there. So the front has a glass, as you can see there, and has a smaller logo. Whereas Generation 1 and 2, which is on the other side of my garage, the front is made of plastic and has a larger logo. So that's the Tesla Gen 2 wall connector there. The front is plastic, larger logo. Okay, so now that we've correctly identified that we have a Gen 3 wall connector, let's press get started. And it says here, scan the QR code. So make sure your wall connector is uh, Generation 3 or high, which we've done. Installation is complete and its lights are on. Let's run. Uh, scan the QR code on the quick start guide to start connecting to the wall connector. Uh, now, I don't have my quick start guide. Let's see what happens if we click that. So the quick start guide is the pamphlet that came inside your wall connector packaging and has credentials needed to connect to the wall connector. If you have a generation three wall connector and no longer have access to the quick start guide, please contact your installer or Tesla support to complete setup. Now, unfortunately, the uh, QR code on the side of the box, I'll just turn this on, is not the same QR code. I've tried scanning that and I'll show you in a second, it doesn't work or that one for that matter. Uh, you must actually have one of these. This is the pamphlet that came with my uh, wall connector. And it's got the uh, Mac SSID WPA2 uh, details. And more importantly, it's got the QR code, which is what you must use to get things set up. So let's just um, see what happens when you actually try to um, scan the side of the box. Um, Let's see, so let's, I'll just turn my light off there. Okay, so I got my app and let's scan the QR code. So let's scan the side of the box right there. Okay, so incorrect QR label. The QR label on the left side of your wall connector cannot be used for registration. Use the QR label on your uh, quick start guide to begin registering your wall connector. If you don't have one, please contact your installer or Tesla support. So um, yeah, this is actually quite important, this pamphlet, which is why I kept it all this time. So let's try the pamphlet now. Well, look, just for completeness sake, there is another QR code down the bottom, just so that you guys know. Okay, so that QR code also says, this QR code is invalid. Please follow instructions to find the correct QR code. Try again. You're probably asking me why don't they just put the QR code on the side of the box wall? Actually, it's a, probably a smart thing because this box sometimes is in public, right? You don't want people messing around with the back end with their smartphone, having the QR code accessible on the side. So I think it's probably a smart thing not having a QR code there. 
All right, let's uh, scan the QR code now on this uh, pamphlet. Okay, so this then pops up, uh, create site, create a home for wall connector to help manage settings and status. So I've got a Jetty Powerwall 2, which is what I use for my home. Let's click that. Now I've already set this up, so let's just see what happens when you've already set it up. Okay, so let's see, press the handle button for five seconds until the green light on the wall connector pulses, then tap connect. This will start the wall connector's Wi-Fi access point. Now just as a caveat, I've actually already set this all up previously, so I'm not sure what will happen if I try the process again. Uh, I will give it a go, of course. Uh, I'll just grab my handle there, press for five seconds. Okay, so that long green light pops up. Okay, so that's definitely pulsing now. Let's press connect. Tesla wants to join the Wi-Fi network, which is the uh, wall connector's SSID. So let's press join. Connecting to wall connector. Again, just as a caveat, I've already done this previously, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so your device is already registered to JD Powerwall 2. So anyway, I can assure you that when you set up for the first time that the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector will update its firmware automatically. And if it's all done correctly, your app will now look like this. You've got a little house there with the uh, Gen 3 wall connector there. And once it's plugged in, you'll see that the car name will be there and you'll see the charge rate as well, which is super handy. Now you remember that uh, prior to this update for the app, when you scheduled your charging time, you could only set a start charge time, but you couldn't actually set an end charge time. Uh, and that is the same for the car as well. But now with this app update, and if you've got the Gen 3 wall connector set up, if you go to settings, you can now go to vehicle charging. The second one is there. And depending on your tariff, if you've got a cheap overnight tariff like I do with PowerShop, uh, then you can set the start charge time and an end charge time as well. So I've got it from midnight to 4 a.m. And that says wall connector schedule, restrict charging to a set time window if you have a time of use rate plan. This may conflict with your vehicle settings. So yes, make sure it's all consistent. So there you go, you can set your charge stop time, which is super handy if you have more expensive rates past a certain time, then you can certainly stop it, which you couldn't do before, uh, just with a vehicle alone. So this is great having this up update. And I should let you know too that my Powerwall 2 version is currently 23.12.2. Okay, so let's plug the Gen 3 wall connector into my car as a demonstration. So push that button there, charge flap goes up. Let's plug in. Okay, so I've currently got my vehicle charging past midnight only. So you can see right there that it's uh, got a scheduled time there, midnight. And in order to override that setting, I've actually got to press start charging. So I might do that right now to show you what happens. Okay, press start charging. Okay, so you heard a little click there and it has overridden the car settings uh, and it's now charging from the Gen 3 wall connector. You see it flashing green there. And on the app, you can see right there. So I'll just zoom in a bit there. So yeah, there's my car, ludicrous speed, 1.5 kilowatts, drawing energy from the battery, Powerwall 2, from the grid, and a tiny bit from solar as well. It is sort of for 16 p.m. in late August. So understandably, not too much sun left. But yeah, that's a little cute little graphic there of the car charging away. It's uh, pretty cool, that wasn't there before. A little extension to the house graphic in the Tesla app, which is pretty nifty. Now I got a little bit excited earlier today because I thought we had access to uh, solar charging, which is what they have in North America, which is basically excess solar charging your car. Now, I thought this because the car's charging rate was matching exactly the surplus solar I had. And I thought, oh great, it's available in Australia now. But what I didn't realize was that I actually had this app Charge HQ running in the background there. Uh, which is what it does, exactly does. It, um, it uh, uses the excess solar from your house production and charges your car with that excess solar as opposed to feeding it back into the grid. Uh, I've been using this app for a while now. It's a pretty handy app and it's compatible with some inverters, including the Tesla Powerwall 2. And you can set 
uh, you know, overnight charging times. It's basically very customizable using excess solar, whether you want to charge your battery first or the car first. And this is what I've been using for a long time now. And you can select different vehicles as well. So Ludicrous Feed, my black Model 3 or the other Model Y we've got as well. And there are a whole host of customizations, including charge limit and you know, all these things like uh, schedule charging, price and renewables, solar tracking, uh, and other advanced settings like that max charge amps, default charge amps, override vehicle schedule, all those sorts of things. So yeah, check it out for yourselves. Charge HQ, very handy app indeed, and uh, developed locally here in Australia. So if I turn charging control off with Charge HQ, this is what happens. Uh, if I go back to the Tesla app, basically if I stop charging the car and put up the amperage and then start charging again, you'll see that after a while, the car is actually drawing the full 11 kilowatts, which is the maximum three phase charging rate, uh, not taking into account uh, the you know, surrounding factors like how much excess solar there is. So unfortunately, yes, uh, solar on charging is not available with Tesla just yet. You'll have to use an app like Charge HQ for the time being until it becomes available for Tesla here in Australia. And check this out, if you want to quickly hop to your vehicle, just double click that. And it'll bring you up to the uh, vehicle screen, which is very cool. And then just press stop charging. Okay, and then now stop charging, then it will just revert back to the scheduled charging for this car, which is midnight to 4 a.m. using the setup I just did for uh, the Gen 3 wall connector and the Tesla Power 2 with the black rear-wheel drive Model 3. And I hear you asking what happens if you have two Teslas or more than two Teslas. I'll just show you what happens with that. Okay, so now I'm hooked up to the uh, Tesla Model Y, uh, which is called RB19. You can see that in the icon there, the blue Model Y. There it is plugged in there to the Gen 3 wall connector. And what's cool is that it knows exactly what car is plugged in, right? It's, uh, that's the beauty of being all integrated with the Tesla system. So I guess that's your answer. What happens if you have another Tesla plugged in? Well, the app and the cars know exactly what they're doing. Okay, so for the second part of this video, I just want to show you that Siri, which is obviously Apple's personal assistant, is now compatible with the Tesla app. Uh, and what you need to get this working is to make sure you have the Apple Shortcuts app available. Now this is a native Apple app. If you don't have it already on your phone, then just download it from the Apple App Store. Uh, it's obviously just available for Apple only, Apple iOS, uh, not available for Android just yet. I'm sure there'll be something very similar coming soon for that operating system. Okay, so once you have the Apple Shortcuts app, just go down here to where it says App Shortcuts and you'll see the Tesla icon there. And there is a list of all the Siri commands that you can use for your Tesla. You can look at it this way as a list, or you can press this one here and you see it as a grid like that. All right, so let's try out some of these. Uh, easy one is to uh, open the Tesla charge port. So let's go, hey Siri, open Tesla charge port. Hey Siri, close Tesla charge port. Awesome. Um, now, the only thing that doesn't work so far is the boot. So uh, I haven't been able to open or close the Tesla boot just yet. But what's super handy, of course, is the frunk or the bonnet. So I find that handy because I keep my charge cables in there. So, hey Siri, open Tesla bonnet. Boom. Now, of course, you can't close this automatically. Uh, it's just an open function, so you'll have to close it for yourself. Uh, but that is quite handy. Okay, let's try a couple more things. So let's go, hey Siri, start preconditioning Tesla. Yep, you can hear the AC running. You can confirm that with the Tesla app. There you go, Tesla app is running and yep, air conditioning is running as well. And of course you can also say, hey Siri, stop preconditioning Tesla. Boom. You can also put on the dog mode. Hey Siri, enable dog mode on Tesla. There we are. My driver will be back soon. Don't worry, the AC is on and it's 21 degrees Celsius. Now you can also turn off dog mode as well, but it's a bit more cautious with that. So let's uh, see what happens. Hey Siri, disable dog mode on Tesla. Yes, we'll continue. 
Okay, so dog mode disabled on ludicrous feed. So that's quite handy in case you do have a dog in there, a little extra safety step. Okay, so, you know, it's pretty good overall. Uh, like I said, the only thing that couldn't get working from this list was the Tesla boot. Uh, so hopefully that'll be fixed in the next update. Okay, so I can hear you asking what happens if you've got more than one Tesla like I do. So we've got a Tesla Model 3 on the left and a Tesla Model Y on the right. So Siri will only obey your commands on the car that is open on the app. So currently, as you saw before, I did all the commands on the black Tesla Model 3, which is the ludicrous feed one. If I wanted to uh, have commands working for the blue one, I've got to flick it over to the blue uh, RB19 Tesla Model Y. So let's do that right now. Okay, so I've got it now on the blue Model Y. Let's try Siri once again. So, hey Siri, open the Tesla bonnet. Boom, bonnet is open. So that's how you flick between two Teslas with Siri. All right, everyone, you've been watching Tesla Tom on Ludicrous Feed here, showing you some of the features of the new Tesla app update version 4.2, 4.0, and also a few Siri voice commands using the Shortcuts app, which is now compatible with the Tesla app uh, on your Apple iOS device. Thanks so much for watching, and until the next Ludicrous Feed video, happy charging.